The Cloud Messenger essentially is a love story. It's between this demigod, a yaksha, and his yakshi. And they're separated uh, by a variety of events. Um, and the, the production is about how they can be brought together. The way we approach the choreography um, might be different in the sense that we start with the emotional score of the poem and uh, we work from there. That inspires the movement first and that the movement actually inspires the music. So in a lot of, um, like more typically in Bharatanatyam, we start with a musical composition about a particular god or a deity or a story, um, and then we work from there. Uh, what's neat about this process and just the opportunity that we've been given through the Performing Diaspora residency is that we were able to start with the content and work backwards. I think speaking from a dancer's perspective, um, the artistic choices in choreography have changed the emotional journey of the piece for me specifically and I think for, for a lot of the dancers because it, it really gives them context as to why we're doing certain steps. Um, traditional Bharatanatyam is really done, um, Ardavus, which are basic steps, are typically strung together to create core ways, which are little segments of larger dances. Um, and they're just steps that are kind of performed back to back and there's really no necess there's not really a emotional component attached to it because that's not the intention of of the dance however with the cloud messenger we use a lot of artaboos and we make core ways but the core ways themselves are meant to tell an emotional story <laughs> They're meant to be fed by emotion, and so we ask the dancers to dance it a certain way. We might do the same step two different ways in two different dances um, with a very different energy, um, both from the body, from the way that the hands are held, the way that the eyes move, um, even the way um, a dancer is smiling. It's, it's all of that is it's changed slightly depending on the emotional motivation for dancing a certain step a certain way. These dances were originally performed in, in palace courts and in temples and um, not in like traditional stages and so this is just it's you know in the last hundred years you you know you see people performing in theaters. If you were to look at some um, very traditional choreography you will find um, there are very codified rhythmic patterns that you have to have like, in every um, in every piece. Um, Nevi has been very um, uh, innovative in that she's really playing with these patterns in ways that um, you don't typically find in these more, more traditional um, uh, dance choreographies. In a traditional Bharatanatyam solo, if I'm talking to an audience and describing how much I miss my beloved, um, how, and how I've been separated, I might say, at this time, I'm heartbroken because you are not here with me. Similarly, in The Cloud Messenger, the ver a very similar story is told, but all the character does is, he doesn't even point to himself, he just says, heartbroken, and he looks away. And he looks in a direction where the woman was standing to kind of signify all of the stuff that all the other mudras could also tell as well. I mean, we're hoping by that, by doing that, that people don't get lost necessarily in everything that's going on with your hands, but can focus on just the sheer, the motion of two, two fingers separating from each other and then connecting the audience to the same space or the same character that the main character is seeing and draw that inference themselves. It's just like writing a poem, you know? It's, 
we don't use any extra words um, or what we feel are extra words. We, we want to say the right words at the right time and just enough for the audience to get what we're trying to say. I think, I think this art, it really thrives on innovation um, because you need it to continually um, speak to new generations, to, to people based on new circumstances and the changing um, priorities and things that, that move people may at their core be the same, but the way you tell a story it can't, it can't always be the same. I feel like I can dance with my whole heart open. You know, rather than trying to limit myself to like becoming a character when it's time to do the mime portion of the piece or, or uh, and then cutting yourself off to dance and show everyone that you can dance with joy, you know, with great technique. But, um, but I think approaching work this way and dancing work that we've created um, in this way, has, it's allowed me to just, yeah, dance with my, my arms wide open and my heart wide open. And it's not just a piece that we're trying to present and trying to get audiences to like. It's, it's, a, it's a transformative piece, or it's become that way, that's sort of changed us all a little bit. And, and, and it's been a blessing to work with people I trust and like, like love and, and want to work with. And I think that's contributed to how the piece is going. Um, and then at another level is um, just working with Counterpulse in general it has been probably a dream that no dancer or artist could imagine. I mean, it's, it's really all about uh, letting the art speak for itself and the, letting the artist go where he or she needs to go with the piece and not letting um, like what is typically done dictate uh, what is presented on stage.